When the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia entered Pennsylvania in mid-June 1863, Commander Robert E. Lee divided his army across multiple portions of the South Central region of the Commonwealth. James Longstreet's corps largely concentrated in the environs west of Gettysburg, at Chambersburg and the Cumberland Valley. E.P. Hill's corps maneuvered a bit further than Longstreet's, passing through a gap in South Mountain at the village of Cashtown. But the most circuitous route belonged to that portion of the rebel army which had crossed the Mason-Dixon line first and remained in the Keystone State for the longest. Just as the remainder of the army had divided, the corps of Richard Yule split up in its own right. Edward Johnson's and Robert Rhodes's division advanced northward through the Cumberland Valley toward Carlisle with the possible goal of applying pressure on the state capital at Harrisburg. Meanwhile, Jubal Early's division cut eastbound through Cashtown Gap and marched past Gettysburg and York in the last days of June. By the end of the month, Lee recognized his army was stretched too thinly. Pesky Pennsylvania militia defended the state capital at Harrisburg, as well as a handful of other crossroads and rail junctions. While the rebel invaders handled the untrained emergency defenders with relative ease, Early had been turned back after the burning of an imperative bridge across the Susquehanna River at Wrightsville on June 28th. Rhodes realized that Harrisburg was too well defended for an assault, and Johnson turned back toward Chambersburg to deposit captured goods to a makeshift Confederate supply hub. By June 29th, Early began trekking his division back westward through York toward Dover, and then deviated into Adams County through East Berlin along modern Route 234. Likewise, Rhodes proceeded marching his division southward from Carlisle through Petersburg, today known as York Springs, along modern business Route 15. The two roads meet at Heidlersburg, about nine miles north of Gettysburg. From Heidlersburg, Early hoped to maneuver west in the direction of Johnson's division near South Mountain, positing to cross the terrain into the Cumberland Valley. Early reported afterward, I could either move to Shippensburg or to Greenwood by way of Arntsville, as circumstances might require, but his plans soon changed. Simultaneously, Lee learned that he no longer had to worry only about state and local militias. Rather, the United States Army of the Potomac was moving northward from Maryland to drive the rebel invaders out of Pennsylvania. Under a newly promoted commander, Major General George Gordon Meade, mounted Union cavalry would soon be in Adams County, followed shortly thereafter by infantry. At his headquarters near Chambersburg, Lee suggested two obvious concentration points for the Confederate Army. Cashtown, which possessed the natural feature of a pass through the substantive South Mountain Range, and Gettysburg, where the man-made element of three macadamized turnpikes and seven dirt highways converged at a central juncture. In turn, Lee sent a courier toward Yule with a message ordering the Corps commander to proceed to Cashtown or Gettysburg, as circumstances might dictate. In his official report, Jubal Early remembered that on the night of June 30th, I encamped about three miles from Heidlersburg and rode to see General Yule at that point and was informed by him that the object was to concentrate the Corps at or near Cashtown and receive directions to move next day to that point. Similarly, Early's colleague Robert Rhodes recalled, on the 30th, having received orders to move toward the balance of the Army, they supposed to be at or near Cashtown, we set out for that place marching through Petersburg, York Springs, and bivouacking at Heidlersburg after a march of at least 22 miles. Isaac Trimble, a cantankerous supernumerary without a command for the time being, journaled, Yule started from Carlisle with Rhodes Division and by an easy march reached Heidelberg before sundown. That he misnamed the town is understandable, but the fact that he felt the march was easy interestingly stands in contrast to Rhodes' reminiscence of a 22-mile journey. In his own right, Corps Commander Richard Yule took stock of his scattered divisions, now coalescing in his vicinity. He remembered on the night of June 30th, Rhodes' division, which I accompanied, was at Heidlersburg, and early three miles off on the road to Berlin. It was that night, Yule remarked, that he obtained Lee's directive from A.P. Hill. According to Yule at Heidlersburg, I received notice from General Hill that he was advancing upon Gettysburg. Mimicking his fellow Corps commander, Yule noted that he turned the head of Rhodes' column toward that place by the Middletown or Carlisle Road along modern Route 34, sending word to Early to advance directly on the Heidlersburg Road, otherwise known as the Harrisburg Road. 
Yule continued, I notified the general commanding of my movements and was informed by him that, in case we found the enemy's force very large, he did not want a general engagement brought on till the rest of the army came up. Trimble remembered the group's collective confusion in discussing Lee's memo. According to a post-war interview with Trimble, the officers read over the order of General Lee several times, commenting on its indefinite phraseology in very severe terms, and every man was asked what was meant by the phrase according to circumstances. Trimble replied to Early's and Rhodes' unsatisfactory opinions by saying, I think I can fully explain the words according to circumstances, and then related in detail the conversation he had with General Lee two days before, and dwelt on the intention of General Lee to fall on the enemy's advance with an overwhelming force. Begrudgingly, Yule questioned, why can't a commanding general have someone of his staff who can write an intelligible order? By the morning of July 1st, Hill's leading division encountered U.S. cavalry along Chambersburg Pike on the west side of Gettysburg. That afternoon, Yule followed suit, reinforcing the rebel line via Rhodes and Early's divisions from the north. Much had been decided at the Crossroads Conference on June 30th at Heidlersburg, and despite Lee's hopes to avoid a general engagement, Yule felt it necessary to shuffle troops into the uncontrollable combat. For all of the Heidlersburg meeting's participants, Yule, Early, Rhodes, and Trimble alike, the escalating encounter went a long way in determining their individual and collective legacies, as over the coming days, the group led their respective commands into battle at Gettysburg. Two Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission highway markers indicate the approximate location of Confederate encampments around Heidlersburg. One sign located just north of the crossroads details the bivouac of Rhodes' division on the night of June 30th and its subsequent movements on the morning of July 1st. Another roadside plaque south of Heidlersburg explains Early's division having camped three miles to the east on June 30th and its eventual passage toward Gettysburg on July 1st.